Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. The objective of this video is I'm going to show it to you how can we actually design and develop a microwave band pass filter on microchip line. This will be the part 18 series discussion on filter design. Okay, so if you're keen to know more about filter design, I have put the playlist under the description. So please study all those videos under the playlist in order to have a better understanding on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Okay, let's understand how can we actually implement a band pass filter on a microchip line. A band pass filter can comprise of shunt short circuit stuff. Okay, so over here you can see that these three are actually called the shunt short circuit stuff. As you can see that on the other end, they actually short circuit. So therefore, this is how they get this short circuit. And they are actually connected in shunt. So therefore, in short, they are called shunt short circuit stuff. And you can see over here, there are one, two, three, three of them. Basically, this shunt short circuit stuff, they have a quarter wavelength. So all of them have the same length, which is a quarter wavelength. On the other side, basically, there will be a connecting line. So connecting line is this two. Basically, again, from here, you can see that they have a length of quarter wavelength also. So in short, basically for a microstrip line to implement a band pass filter, okay, basically you need to have this shunt short circuit stop and also you need to have a connecting line. Okay, so let's understand okay, how can we actually implement this so-called quarter wavelength where the G is the guided wavelength in the medium of propagation at the mid-band frequency F0. Okay, so what does it mean? Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, for example, we design a front stage of UWB. Okay, so front stage of UWB is from 3 GHz to 5 GHz. So right in the middle of this 3 GHz and 5 GHz will be at 4 GHz. So which means that if let's say we design this band pass filter okay, to meet the criteria to have a pass band characteristic from 3 GHz to 5 GHz, and right at the mid band will be at 4 GHz, which means that all these transmission line, basically they need to be quarter wavelength with respect to 4 GHz, which is the mid band frequency. Okay, remember, let's say I, I told you I want to design UWB from 3 to 5, and then at the middle, basically it's 4 GHz. So all this length of the transmission line, I need to be ensure that they are actually quarter wavelength with respect to 4 gigahertz. So hopefully with this, you are a little bit clear how we actually can have the so-called the length of the transmission line. After we done that, basically we can apply these five steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, in order to implement a band pass filter on the microchip line. Okay, so this is step number one. Okay, step number one, simply just want to calculate what is the beta value. So one thing that we actually can substitute will be this fractional bandwidth. Okay, so again, on the example, I will explain a little bit more on this step number one. After we're done with step number one, we actually need to do step two and step three. Basically, step two and step three allow us to calculate what will be the emittance for the connecting line. Okay, which means that this step two and step three basically are applied to calculate mainly for connecting line. So after we have done this step two and step three, we will be able to obtain the emittance of this connecting line. Okay, so there are four connecting line. So after we done this step two and step three, we will be able to obtain all the emittance of all the connecting lines. So after we done step two and step three, okay, we are ready to calculate the shunt short circuit stop emittance. Okay, which is here, what will be the emittance here? Okay, so step number four, this is a very general formula. Okay, so maybe in the example, I will explain a little bit further why we need to do step number four. 
Okay, but once we finish step number five, we will be able to obtain so-called the emittance of the shunt short circuit stuff. So after we've done step number five, we will be able to achieve all the values of the emittance of shunt short circuit stuff. Okay, before I continue, I want to highlight this very important thing. Let's start by going back on the connecting line. Okay, you can see that step number two, there are actually three equations. Okay, but these three equations are actually used for different use cases. For example, this first equation here, basically this is actually implemented for the first connecting line. So this equation is only for the first connecting line. As for this equation here, they are actually used for the last connecting line. So basically over here, this equation for the first connecting line, this equation is only for the last connecting line. But over here, this equation is basically in general, okay, for all the rest of the connecting line, as long as the connecting line are so-called in between the first and the last one, you can actually implement this formula to calculate the emittance of the connecting line. But for step number three, okay, is is applied to all the connecting line. You don't need to have three sets. Basically, you can obtain all the emittance of all the connecting line by implement step number three. But step number two, you need to be very careful. This will be the first connecting line. This will be the last connecting line. This will be in general for all the rest of the connecting line that are in between the first and the last. Okay, you can see over here, these are all in between the first and the last. Basically, you can use this formula to calculate all the emittance for the rest of the connecting line. Let's come to the shunt short circuit start. Okay, they are actually the same as what you have seen on the connecting line. Okay, this equation here, basically on step number five, they are mainly for the first shunt short circuit stop. Okay, so this formula here is basically just only for the first shunt short circuit stop. As for this formula, will be on the last shunt short circuit stop. Okay, so basically this will be for the first, this will be the last. This again is so-called in general, okay, as long as the shunt short circuit stop is in between the first shunt short circuit stop and also the last shunt short circuit stop, I can actually use this formula to calculate the emittance of the, the rest of the shunt short circuit stop. Okay, I guess that instead of all words, let me give you an example so that we are all clear how can we actually design a pen pass filter. Okay, for example, over here, we are tasked to design a band pass filter using micro strip line with specification as following. Okay, we know that the order will be five, fifth order. Okay, we also given the fractional bandwidth of 0 0.5 at a middle band frequency of two gigahertz. Okay, so basically we are given this fractional bandwidth, which is 0 0.5, and they actually center at two gigahertz. And we are also given this 0 0.1 dB pass band ripper characteristic. Okay, which means that this is a championship having 0 0.1 dB ripper. Okay, so over here, there are, this is, will be the table for the 0 0.1 dB pass band ripper characteristic. But if you look through the internet, you actually have various table. Okay, we have various table, but be very careful to choose the correct table. Okay, for example, for the question, they tasked me to find this 0 0.1 dB pass band ripper characteristic. Then this will be the table for 0 0.1 dB passband ripper characteristic. You probably have another table, for example, a 3 dB passband ripper characteristic. That will be completely different paper. Basically, you need to have some understanding of this here. So choose the correct table to obtain from this 0 0.1. For example, this question tasks us to find 0 0.1 dB passband ripper characteristics here. So the question task is on the order of five. I have boxed up the order of five to further discuss on this. Okay, on the last stage here, I know that this is one here. Basically, it means that, okay, over here, this will be the source, this will be the load. They are all equals to one. They are so-called balanced. Okay, which means that the source having an impedance of 50 ohm, as for the load is also having an impedance of 50 ohm. So this is actually what it means here. So once we've done this, we are ready to extract the rest of the G term. Okay, over here, this will be G1, okay, which is 1.1468, which is here. This will be G1. I 
can also see that G5 having the same value, 1.1468. So therefore, I write G1 equals to G5, which is equals to 1.1468. As for G2 here, okay, you can see that G2 and G4, they have the same value. So again, over here, I denote that G2 and G4 having the value of 1.3712. And last but not least, G3 having this 1.9750, which is illustrated here. So this is how I actually obtain all the G term. Basically, based on a table, the question tasks us to find this 0 0.1 dB Chebyshire past band ripple characteristic. I find the table. I actually box up based on the order number and I actually obtain all the G term as illustrated over here. So once I've done this, I'm ready to apply the five equation okay, in order to achieve a band pass filter on a microchip line. Okay, step number one. Okay, basically, this is the step number one which I have shared to you earlier on. Okay, so for example, for this case here, I know that step number one, okay, I'm given in the question that the fractional bandwidth is actually 0 0.5. So from here, I can calculate that my beta is equal to 3 pi over 8. Okay, so basically, I'm done with step number one. So over here, everything is the same, except I just need to substitute what will be my fractional bandwidth, which is 0 0.5. And I can actually easily calculate that my beta is equal to 3 pi over 8. So with this, I'm ready to apply step number 2 and step number 3 to obtain my emittance of the connecting line. Okay, before I mention this, how we actually can use this step number 2, okay, you realize that all this equation has the term of H. Okay, so I need to let H be equal to 2. Basically, the H is unitless and there's no fixed number. Okay, you can let H be any number. For example, you can let H be 1, 1 1.2, 1.5, etc. Any number. But for me, I actually prefer H to be equal to 2. Maybe later on, I share with you why I actually prefer to let H equal to 2. So like what I mentioned earlier on, this H term, you don't need so-called uh, any fixed in the integer number. Okay, you just need to ensure that it can be 1, 1 1.2, etc. or 2. Basically, this is uh, any numbers that you actually can decide so that later on, I will illustrate on this again. So once I've done this, I'm ready to apply my step number 2. So this is the equation that I showed it to you earlier on, on step number 2. And remember, this equation is only for the first connecting line, if you still remember. So I'm ready to calculate all the value here. So basically, G not okay. The G term I have put all the value here. So these are all the G term that basically I extract over here. I just put it quickly on the top right so that I can easily reference them. Okay, so over here, G not is equal to one. So therefore, this is equal to one. H, as I told you, that is um uh, no unit dimensionless. You can let any numbers. So I just let it to become two. So G one is actually one point one four six eight which is here, and G2, which is 1.3712 over here. So over here, I can punch my calculator. Okay, I should be able to arrive at this number, which is 1.293. So next, okay, this will be the set of formula that is actually calculate the last connecting line. So again, I'm going to show it to you how can I actually calculate based on this formula. Okay, so basically these are four five. So basically you can see that this is four, this is five, which means that n equals to five. Okay, so basically this will be six. Okay, so basically this will be four, right? This n is equals to be five because this is four five, and this n is equals to five. So this will be six. This will be four. So basically this is how I arrive the equation over here. So now I'm ready to calculate. So again, g naught is equals to one. Okay, this H thing is basically equal to 2. Remember, there is no unit for the H term. G1, okay, is 1.1468, which is illustrated here. G6 is equal to 1 over here. G0 is equal to 1. And G4 is actually equal to 1.3712, which is illustrated here. And from here, I can compute that this J45 over Y0 is equal to 1.293. Over here, you realize that they are actually the same. Okay, which means that right at this point here, they are actually symmetric, which means that this connecting line will be the same as this connecting line. 
and this connecting line will be the same as this connecting line. Clear on this. So basically with this, I do not want to calculate my emittance of 3, 4. I basically just want to calculate the emittance of 2, 3. They are the same value. So remember this formula basically apply for all the connecting line that is in between the first and the last one, if you still remember. So over here, I can easily calculate my Y23. So this will be my Y23. Okay, so over here, since I have my Y23, I can actually calculate the term here. So basically, this is 2 and 3. So over here will be 2 and 3 also. So basically, this will be G2, G3. This is how I actually arrive this equation. Based on this formula here, because this is 2, this is 3. So over here, this will be G2 and this will be G3. And that's how I actually arrive at this equation here. So again, H will be equal to 2. G0 is equal to 1. G1 is actually equal to 1.1468, which is written here. Okay, which is square root. Okay, G2. G2 is actually 1.3712 over here. And then G3 which is 1.975, which is illustrated here. And again, I punch my calculator. I should be able to get this 1.394. Okay, again, this connecting line will have the same as 1.394. Okay, so if you want, you can try it on your own. Okay, but trust me, they should be the same. If not, you probably have made some careless mistake. So once I've done this, I actually can calculate the emittance of the connecting lines. So this is step number three. Okay, so this is step number three. So I'm ready to calculate the emittance of all the connecting lines. Basically over here, this will be the equation. So this is one, two here. So over here, this will be one, two over y naught. So basically this thing here, which I have calculated early on, the J12 y naught, if you still remember, J12 y naught, which is 1.293. So therefore, this will be one, one my 1.293. And why not is simply 1 over 50. Remember, I normalize against 50. So Z0 is equal to 50. And why not is simply just 1 over 50. So from here, I calculate the emittance of my first connecting line will be 0 0.02586, which is illustrated here. Remember the last one, okay, basically they are symmetric. Okay, so they should have the same emittance of the first connecting line. So the first and the last connecting line they should be the same. So once I've done this, I can calculate the emittance of the 2, 3 and 3, 4 connecting line. Okay, so again, this will be the, my emittance value. Okay, you can see how I apply the formula. This will be 2, 3. So um, over here will be 2, 3. So I actually obtained J2, 3, Y0 early on, which is here. J2, 3, Y0, which is 1.394. So over here, this will be 1.394. And from here, I can actually calculate the emittance of my 2, 3 will be equal to 0 0.02787, which means that this connecting line 3, 4 will be the same as the connecting line of 2, 3. So from here, you can see that I have successfully calculate the emittance of all the connecting line. Clear? So next, I'm ready to calculate okay, based on the shun short circuit stop now. Okay, remember, there will be a step number four. Okay, so this is the equation for step number four. Okay, so basically, this again will be one, two. So I don't need to calculate four, five because they are the same. Okay, if you look over here, this is N12 and four, five. They are the same. Two, three and three, four, they will be the same. So I just need to calculate two, three. Okay, so basically over here, I just want to show it to you. They are the same. I don't really need to calculate 3, 4. But what I need to calculate is basically N1, 2 and N2, 3 is good enough. So this is the equation. Okay, again, I'm ready to substitute the value here. So basically this is J1, 2. Okay, so J1, 2. Okay, maybe I should explain how I actually get this equation here. So let's say this is 1, 2. Okay, so over here will be 1, 2 over Y not. So over here, all the term is exactly the same. Okay, remember this beta actually get from the step number one. Okay, so let's move on to step number one, which is 3 pi over 8. Okay, so basically this is how I get this beta here, which is 3 pi over 8, if you see over here. So from here, I can obtain all this value here. 
Okay, so basically, this will be exactly the same. So next is basically I'm going to substitute the value. For example, J12, why not? Okay, which I have calculated earlier on. J12, why not? Which is 1.293. Okay, so therefore over here, this will be 1.293 squared. Because there's a squared term here. Plus H is the same. I can't change the H. Once I used to, all the equation, all the H term need to be equal to 2. G0 is equal to 1. G1 is 1.1468. Tangent, this will be my first equation or first step that I need to do, which is 3 pi over 8 over here. Okay, one thing I want to highlight, how you press this in your calculator must be in radian mode because you see this pi here. Okay, remember, this must be in radian mode. So once you punch this term in a calculator, you actually get this 7.665. This term 7.665 actually represents this whole term. I actually prefer to leave it like this so that it will be much more easier. Okay, so this thing is here. So basically, I can calculate that this will be equal to 3.0556. And to 3, because I have already calculated this, this part here, you can see that they are they won't change basically based on the different end, they won't change. So they will be still remaining at 7.665. As for this case, this is N23, which means that this will be J23. So J23, which I have found earlier on, which is 1.394. Okay, so therefore this will be 1.394. And again, I actually can calculate that N23 is equal to 3.0997. Okay, so basically this is how we can actually obtain the step number four. So once we are done this, we are ready to calculate all the shunt short circuit stuff. Okay, so these are the sets of formula for step number five, if you still remember. Okay, but let me just illustrate a few case here. Okay, so this will be the formula for the first so-called the shunt short circuit stuff. If you still remember, this will be the formula for the first and this will be the formula for the last part because they are actually symmetric. Okay, so therefore I just do the first one will be good enough. Okay, earlier on I have told you why I want to choose H equals to 2. Because over here, if this is H equals to 2, 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1, and 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So this whole thing will disappear. So therefore, normally I want to choose the H is equals to 2 because I I actually can simplify my calculation. This whole thing disappeared what I need to calculate basically will be based on this term here. Okay, so like what I mentioned, this whole thing, it just disappeared. So I just need to calculate this term here. So this one not is equal to 1 over 50. N12, which I have calculated earlier on, which is 3.0556, which is here, minus this J12. Okay, so this J12 is actually here. J12, which is here, 1.293. Okay, so therefore, over here, I can actually calculate my emittance of my shun short circuit stop, the first one here, which is 0 0.03525. Okay, so this is the first emittance of the shun short circuit stop, and it will be the same okay, for the last one. Okay, so if not, you can always try this formula you will be able to get this number also. So from here, I have done my first and my last one. So I'm ready to calculate the rest of my shun short circuit stuff. Okay, so again, I told you that this and this Y2 and Y4, they should be the same. Okay, so therefore, I don't need to do double. I just need to calculate Y2 is good enough. And this set of formula, like what I mentioned earlier on, will be a general form to calculate the shunt short circuit stop that is in between the first and the last. Basically, this formula will be valid for Y2, Y3, and Y4. As I told you, Y2 and Y4 will be the same. So basically, this will be for the Y2 and Y4, and this will be for the Y3. But let me explain how I actually arrive all the different numbers here. So this will be Y2. So again, from here, this will be Y0. Okay, so basically you can see that this is 2. Okay, so this will be 2. So therefore it's 1, 2. Again, from here, this is plus i, which is 2. And then uh, i plus 1 will be 3. Okay, because all the item is supposed to be 2. So over here, you will be able to arrive all the numbers here. So basically you can see that basically this is 1, 
because all the item will be equal to two, this will be two, this is three over here. Okay, so this is how I arrive. So N12, okay, earlier on I have shown it to you N12 and N23. So N12 is 3.0556, which is here. Okay, and then uh my N23, which is 3.0997, okay, which is illustrated here. Okay, so again on next is J12 over Y not. Okay, J12 over Y not is here. J12 over Y not is 1.293. So therefore, I actually obtain my 1.293 and then the last term will be J23 over Y0. Okay, so J23 terms is over here, which is 1.394. Okay, so therefore over here, I actually get my 1.394 and from here, I can calculate that my emittance of my second Shan short circuit stop okay, will be 0 0.06937. Okay, so next, okay, I will be calculating the third one over here. So basically for this case now, my I is equal to 3. So from here will be 2, 3. This will be 3, 4. Okay, again from here, this will be 2, 3 because I equals to, to be equal to 3 now. So I 3, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. And this will be 3. And again, I will be equal to 3. So therefore it's 3, 4 over here. Again, I have calculated all this here. So N23, you can see that will be the same as this. So this guy become N23. And then if you look at the table N34, which I have illustrated here, which is the same 3.0997, which is here. And these two, they are basically symmetric, if you still remember. So basically this is 2, 3 and 3, 4. Okay, so you can again refer back to J23. Okay, J23 is here. Okay, so I told you that J23 and J34 will be the same. So therefore, they will be 1.394. So basically, this will be 1.394. And from here, I have also successfully calculated the emittance of my third Sun short circuit stop. So from here, you can see that I have basically calculated all the emittance of the Sun short circuit stop. So this is actually all put into one slide for illustration. So basically, I have successfully designed a band pass filter based on a certain formulas. I actually successfully implement this. So I just want to show an example here. For example, if I want to implement them onto a micro strip line, basically having a dielectric constant of 10.2 and the Dielectric substrate having a thickness of 0 0.635. Okay, basically, this is a Roger board. Okay, so basically, how we get the width and length, maybe in the next few video, I'm going to illustrate. Okay, but over here, I just transform the emittance. Okay, basically, I will be knowing what will be the width. The length will be based on the quarter wavelength with respect to 2 gigahertz. Okay, because this design actually has the mid band of 2 gigahertz. And from here, how we actually implement a short circuit will be using a BI over here. Okay, again, in terms of PCB configuration, maybe the next video I will illustrate. If not, this video will be too long. And then finally, the simulation result. Over here, you can see that okay, I have successfully designed center at 2 gigahertz, maybe a little bit drift to the right. Basically, I'm supposed to get 1 to 3. Okay, it's slightly drift to the right. But overall, you can see that I have successfully designed a band pass filter almost at the middle band of 2 gigahertz by applying the five steps. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you guys.